Well, hello and welcome everyone to Yorkshire Gamer. And today I'm going to be uh, doing an unboxing stroke review of a build that I've done recently. And that is this 1 700 scale SS John W. Brown Liberty ship from Trumpeter. Part of a big 1 700 scale World War II project that I'm currently dealing with. Uh, doing with. I'm going to be making quite a few... <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to be making quite a few of these because I am building uh, a, up to uh, a large World War II uh, naval convoy so that we can do some convoy actions. And uh, this is uh, one of only two kits that I've been able to find at a reasonable price uh, for merchant vessels. And uh, So let's dive into the box and, and have a look what you get there and uh, how you build it. And I've also used some of these Edouard 1700th naval figures to go on the ship as well, just to give it a little bit of life. So I'll have a look at those as well. So uh, we'll be back in a second and do the unboxing. So here's the box, um, SS John W. Brown. Uh, bought this from King Kit, uh, one of the regular people that I get my stuff from. Uh, very reasonable price, can't remember exactly, but uh, certainly under 20 quid, uh, maybe 16, 17 quid. Um, lovely uh, picture on the front of the ship. Um, it's a uh, um, oil painting or colour painting that somebody's done, very, very nice. On the side there, we've got an idea of uh, the ship colours. Another repeat of the picture on that side. An overview looking down on the deck with a little bit of a description of history there. And uh, a repeat of the other side on that end. So, we'll open the box up. If we can. Oh, there we go. And uh, let's have a look contents wise. Um, Inside with the uh, trumpet kits, you always get um, a decent uh, set of instructions, and within there, you will normally have one of these. And they're really nice color illustrations of the ship that you are going to build. And in the top corner here, it's got a guide to the colors uh, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrol, and it gives you. Um, the relevant code numbers for those ships which is really really useful um, and then we're on to the uh, ship instructions itself uh, on the left hand page here we've got uh, overview of the parts and sprues and then we're on to the build now um, with this particular ship um, if you like funnels you're in for a treat because there's bloody thousands of them all over the place and um, it's quite a fiddly build, lots of uh, little stuff all over the place and uh, these uh, payload cranes here are uh, a little bit fragile. I, I've built two of these now and uh, I've broken a couple uh, during the build process. Um, nice clear instructions, nice and easy to do other than the size of the parts. Um, this is a, a very, very uh, straightforward kit to put together. So you build it in sections and um, if you've watched my video on Bismarck you'll know that I build these sections and I'm painting weather them individually before I come to this section here which is kind of your main build and um, then the final page that gives you the options um, for your full hull and your waterline plate so let's dig in and have a look at the parts themselves and uh, the vast majority of trumpet kits uh, come in this format uh, so in this uh, sealed bag here, we have got uh, the base plate there, the waterline plate, uh, nicely in uh, in red, uh, sort of a deep red or ochre colour, which would be the, the normal colour painted off the bottom of the ship. And then you've got a single plate there for the deck of the ship. In uh, this one here, we have uh, put together a bit of tape and some... Uh, I don't know what it is, it's not quite bubble to bubble wrap, but it protects the two and keeps them together. And as you can see, they split off there. And then you've got the full hull if you're going to go for that build. And then you've got the top part of the hull, which will sit on the waterline plate that we saw before. If you're going to do it um, at sea, as uh, as I did, in and um, which you saw at the start of the video. And uh, we'll cover again at the end. So um, we get... Sealed up in these bags here, we get a couple of sprues in that one and a couple of sprues in that one and then in there we get a 
uh, sheet of decals uh, which is all sealed up uh, as you can see brand new and uh, the box is nicely set, uh, sectioned so it's quite useful when you're building you can kind of keep your hull in here and keep your parts in there and have all the other bits and uh, you know your unused sprues that you're still working on in there if you're not building the kit in one session so I quite like that so I'll just uh, open the bags and then come back to you in a second so first up a uh, quick look at uh, the decal sheet here and uh, it's uh, it's well protected it's got some sellotape on it as well as uh, this cover on the front and uh, if I've thought of it oh, I've just broken it now <laughs> uh, here is the knife never work with animals or Yorkshire gamers that's probably the best thing to uh, say after this and um, slightly broken now i'll bring the light up uh, to that uh, so we can get in and focus in on it uh, but we've got the name up here in white which is really really uh small and then a couple of signal flags uh american flag and uh, a name very very difficult to see under this light it's just there uh white obviously um to go on the rear of the ship. So that's the decals, or what's left of them after I nearly destroyed them. And uh, then we'll move on to the sprues themselves. Again, I'll bring the light up so you can see them in a little more detail. So uh, we've got the the main deck for the uh, the main superstructure here, sides of the superstructure, and then if we can get in and get some really nice detail on those. You can see lots of detail on them. These work really well with pin washes. Uh, these are the uh, sort of the holders for the cargo booms. Uh, we've got the uh, masts there, the stacks, and uh, generally really nice bit of kit there. That's A, and then if we look at uh, B, this one here. Then this contains our anti-aircraft platforms, sides of the superstructure, uh, more uh, AA gun platforms here, as you can see, and then uh, some uh, detailing parts there. All fairly big, all fairly easy to use so far, and then you get two uh, exact same sprues of uh, this particular one. Uh, which has the more smaller parts in which we've got some AA guns. We've got the small funnels. I mean, you can see we've got eight funnels there straight away. Uh, and don't forget, you get two of these. You've got the um, sort of mini cranes, some uh, lifeboats. These are particularly fragile, the, uh, the cargo booms. Uh, keep an eye on those, especially when you are removing them from the sprues. Uh, you want to be coming away from the actual part itself. Uh, whilst you're cutting it to remove the stress from the part because it will just break um, and then trim it down later on. So there we go, um, you get another one of those as well. So uh, we've got, let's see if it says on here, uh, how many parts that we've got in the build itself. And uh, typically it doesn't tell you. <laughs> so uh, are we on the front? 160 plus pieces so that gives you an idea of the uh, complexity of the ship um, but having built these uh, two of these now as I say um, they're relatively easy to do a little bit fiddly with the funnels all goes together nicely there's very little if any uh, gaps between the main components for you to worry about filler or that sort of thing um, so let's go and have a look at the finished model so here's my converted, uh, my completed version of John W. Brown, the uh, kit that we've just had a look at, uh, sprue-wise, etc. And uh, you can see I've done a waterline version, and uh, it's done on an MDF base, um, which I've done a, a C scape on it. Um, if you're interested in how I've done this, there's a couple of uh, uh, videos that I've done on the uh, process. Uh, included within the Build the Bismarck series that I've done on this channel. Uh, so um, I'll put some links in the show notes below so that you can see that if you're interested in how I've done the C. Um, so it's painted uh, as per the instructions on 
the uh, model uh, that we looked at earlier on and that that lovely painting guide that comes with it um, I've used an airbrush to do all, virtually all the painting on here and I've also used uh, another a number of uh, weathering items and um, that's including mostly AK Interactive, I think exclusively AK Interactive. Um, we've got uh, rust and grime in streaks on here to give it that lived in look. Uh, I've also used um, a deck wash um, from AK Interactive, a grey deck wash, just to give it that lived in look again. And uh, pin washes around the cargo bays, uh, just to bring out the detail. I'll uh, I'll do a little bit of a zoom in for you, just so you get more of an idea. Uh, so you can see the the pin wash down those ribs on the cargo holds, uh, just to give it a little bit more detail. A lot of contrast at uh, distance. Remember, normally we're not looking at a ship model this closely, uh, especially for this one. I've built this for for wargaming. Um, this is designed to look good, hopefully closely, but most especially from a few feet away uh, whilst uh, a game is in course. And I'm just slowly moving this around while I'm chatting just to give you an idea of the ship itself. And uh, there's the front with the, the nameplate. And uh, if we just change the focus a little bit, which is not what you're doing, you can see the front AA mountains uh, mountings there uh, and then I've used an AK seafoam effect to get the uh, the wake in and uh, the tops of various uh, uh, waves etc just down the ship to try hopefully and uh, give it a realistic look I'm really happy with it um, if you've if you're not familiar with Yorkshire Gamer and you've come to this uh, channel because you're a model maker, for example, I'm not a model maker. I don't build models. It's not my hobby, really, and I haven't done any kits uh, since I was 15, really, which is probably 40 years ago. Um, but I've got a sudden burst on 1700th World War II naval kits for wargaming, but I'm really getting into the building modeling weather inside of things as well um, so um, if it's not quite up to your uh, modeling standards then I do apologize but this is very much the work of a war gamer and uh, this is probably this was probably only the third ship that I did uh, with this project so I am learning all the time and uh, it's uh, it's certainly a great process and I really really like the look of those ships of these ships so if you look really carefully on the ship you will notice some of these guys uh edouard 1700 naval figures i just bought a generic one of these and uh, used them in various parts on the deck as a bit of a um, experiment if you like to see what they look like uh, so if we zoom in again on the side of the ship there you can see just see because these are tiny, they're about two and a half mil uh, in size. Uh, a couple of guys there just walking around on the deck. And then I've got some signal guys up there. And uh, for a bit of a laugh, that's the closest I could get the uh, figures to uh, spelling out YMCA from the uh, classic uh, 70s dance tune. Um, they also did a track called In the Navy, The Village People, but that was too long to spell, so I went for YMCA. So that's just a little bit of fun there. Um, the models themselves, or the figures themselves, are, as you see, tiny and you have to cut them off which kind of loose which always leaves a little uh, metallic flash on, on the head they're also um, two-dimensional um, but at this sort of scale as you can see from that that they do look quite nice so um, what all I've done with them is I've cut them off the sprue I've attached them to the model using uh, photo at super glue uh, then I've done a little dab of paint on the top of the head uh, to represent a hat or a hair colouring just to cover up that metallic, tiny metallic bit. It does shine like mad when you put light on it, which is why I've gone to that level of detail. And then I've put a tiny wash of um, a um, army painter dark tone just to kind of blend them in 
to the, the consistency of the weathering that's already on the ship um, as they stuck um, in their original format they did stick out a little bit so um, in normal look you know when you're normally looking at the ship you are struggling to see them uh, you know you have to make an effort to go down <laughs> to their level so to speak and uh, check it out um, but I think it's it's worth it and it's a nice little thing a little talking point uh, when you know a game with them or doing a game with them and somebody goes bloody hell these blokes on here so um, I've, that's the only ship I've done this with and I've not really put that many figures on this particular ship I might put some on later on this is very much a test uh, but we'll see how we go. So there we go. Here, that's my review, build and unboxing of the 1700th scale Liberty ship from Trumpeter, SS John W. Brown. Highly recommended by me. I should be buying loads of these to, I probably want a convoy of maybe 20 ships. So uh, I'm going to have a lot of these, but this is just a review for you to, as a modeler or a wargamer, to have a look at these and uh, see what I do with them. So until next time, City.